hearing this melody in my ear. I keep feeling this presence so Jesus is the last song, he's the last song. 
So anyway, the, my drummer came to me and said, sing this scripture. And then the scripture was Proverbs 3. It's, and it, I just looked at it and then I started going, said, we will write them all. Ooh, I see y'all be on Instagram, huh? Y'all be. So we really ought to write. Okay, let us sing the song, all right? Come on, let's go for it. Y'all gotta, we gotta find some energy. Come on. Right them all He who abides in me will forever be fruitful indeed. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to the Father except that He comes through me. Yeah. So let not mercy, let not mercy and, truth and truth say forsake you, forsake you say forsake you, forsake you. Let, not mercy, let not mercy and, and, truth, and truth who we say forsake you, forsake you say for
God, my God, isn't God good? Oh, yes, he is. God is a good God. Don't make me, don't make me break out in Pentecostal mode. Ah, oh, Father, thank you for this is the day that you have made. We do rejoice and we're glad in it. Grateful for it. Have your way today. Lord God, let signs and wonders today like never before accompany and follow this word. This is my prayer and my expectation. Father, move by your spirit and Lord, you arise and every enemy be scattered. Have your way, strengthen us in your will and Lord be glorified. Again, as I always pray, take me out of self, use me for somebody else. This is my prayer in Jesus name, amen. Beloved, I mean this thing. I don't want to be in nobody's way of seeing Jesus. I don't want to be in nobody's way of being blessed by the Lord. My God, I feel the presence of the Lord. Let's hold up our Bibles, everybody. Let's get right into it and let's declare, Lord, I thank you. Whether you got it by tablet, by your phone, by actual page. Like a friend of mine used to say, my biblical Bible. <laughs> let's hold it up and let's declare together, Lord, I thank you that I have my Bible. It is my personal copy, a basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer, but I'm also a doer. And my life is so much more than blessed because I hear and I obey the word of the living God. Father, your word, come on, say it with me. I hide in my heart that I will not sin against you. Have your way with me today. Have your way in my life and be glorified. I declare, I declare that as a result of what I hear today, because my mind is alert and my heart is receptive, I will not be distracted, but I will hear what the word has to say. And as a result, of what I hear today, I'm going to leave this experience better than I came to it. In Jesus' name, amen. My God, beloved, my God, my God, my God, my God. Beloved, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place, and I thank him. I thank him. I thank him. We are currently in a series of lessons from Midday Manor. Oh, my God, entitled Discipleship. And uh, I, I, I just want to thank God that we are on lesson number seven today. Look how far we've come together. Lesson number seven, we're on. I know I'm on a little bit early. I am a, a J. Charles Carrington Jr. For those that all don't already know that I am the senior pastor of the Life Builders Church, and I love you, and I greet you all in Jesus' name, and we thank God for you. Got one thing to say to you. Before we start, other than we're starting earlier today, have uh, important things going on today, meetings, amen, that I have to attend. God is really doing some awesome things. Keep us in prayer, amen, as we obey God and see him do what he said he would do. That's all I'm saying for right now. Listen, my wife is a gifted, anointed, and powerful author. Pastor Althea Carrington is not only an anointed singer, she's a prophetic gift and she is a gifted author. She wrote this book back, my God, let me make sure I got it right. Uh, make sure I got it right. Back in 2020, she uh, published this right in the middle, actually the starting place of the pandemic is when she finally was able to get it published. And, and uh, this book has been a bestseller of hers all over the country people have read and are still reading The 490 Factor. Beloved, let me just read you an excerpt from this book because it is so powerful, all right? When we respond by forgiving, it will set us up for endless blessings. We will see the hand of God break forth on the left and on the right. Our health will spring forth. God will send help finances and unexpected favor. The heavens will be open to you. When heaven is open to you, though everything around you may not be perfect, you will have a peace within that surpasses all understanding. It is not a magic land with lollipops, gumdrops, rainbows, 
or a genie in the lamp. Living a life of obedience according to the word of God gives us access to kingdom privileges. Lord have mercy. This is what Pastor Althea Carrington has written in this wonderful book, The 490 Factor. 490, yes, yeah, 70 times seven. When someone asks Jesus, how many times should I forgive my neighbor? And Jesus said 70 times seven. But forgiveness is not um, excusing a wrong. Um, the wrong was done, the offense was done, but forgiveness is the act of allowing God to make it as if it will not ever bother you again. Now you gotta allow God to do that. Why? Because God is greater than offenses. Now Jesus already said he'll deal with offenses. And one thing we have to do is allow the Holy Ghost to help us to remove it from human hands and put it in God's hands. It's not easy to do, but when you do, you have the power of God, the blessing that the Lord gives you that allows you to walk in a level of freedom that you will never know unless you forget. Now, that doesn't mean the person will regain their former place. Doesn't even mean you got to trust them again, but you don't need to be bitter. You relinquish the right for you to take vengeance. You let God be God and have his way. And um, I'm telling you, beloved, it is something I, I've learned it. My wife has written this book under the unction and leading of the Holy Ghost. It is on Amazon. The link is in uh, the description of this and you will be blessed to get it. My oldest son designed the cover. Man, a powerful artist this young man is. And then my youngest son uh, did a commercial for the book. You'll see the link for that in the description. But now I've got to declare this word. We are on lesson number seven. Last week, we dealt with the worship practice of disciples. Today, we're going to deal with the praise practice of disciples. Now, I want to mention this as the protocol. So I want us to look at our Bibles at Psalm 100, verse 4, from the King James Version. Let's just use the original language for right now because it still makes sense. But we want to have great understanding and I don't think it can get any clearer than this. I call the following verse, the protocol. You know, before I get into the word even deeper, every environment has a protocol. Every environment has a protocol. I learned this watching my pastor, Apostle I. Ravan Hilliard. And um, when he was growing up as a young preacher, he was also, before I was, he's older than I am, but he was called to preach at an early age. I believe he started preaching at nine, nine years old. And there were ministers that helped to bring him along, men of God that took him under their wing and helped him to get going in the ministry. And um, he's mentioned these names. He consistently mentions these names. His father in the faith was Apostle um, Frederick Casey Price. <laughs> and I thank God for that great man of God. He's with the Lord now, but his work carries on. And uh, Dr. Price and, and Mom Betty Price are a gift to the body that should never be diminished. But they helped as my man of God grew up under some great preachers in Houston, and they took him under their wing. And uh, as a young boy, they helped develop him. And uh, every chance he gets, he speaks of them. He honors them. Some of them have gone on to be with the Lord, okay? And he may not have ever been, quote unquote, their son, but he honored those who took the time to show him how ministry ought to be. And, and there was protocol they taught him. You know, back in Baptist tradition, beloved, you didn't get up in somebody's pulpit. You, you just didn't. And you definitely didn't come back if you did not exercise proper protocol. So he learned protocol, he speaks of it. I heard Bishop Jakes today, he was introducing his pastor, uh, Bishop Sherman Watkins. And you know, Bishop Jakes, he even said it out of his mouth. And I, I love this. 
He said, I am more famous than him, but I am fruit from his tree. Wow, protocol. One of the things that we all have got to remember, every environment has a protocol. And to come before the Lord, you must enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. You must be thankful unto him and bless his name. <laughs> that is part one of the praise protocol. Part one of the worship protocol is also bow before him, give him glory and honor. You don't worship without speaking of who God is to you. That's the protocol. And you don't praise without showing and declaring gratitude for what he's done for you. So again, beloved, I want us to know the protocol. And again, I teach, I consider the protocol is Psalm 100, verse 4. Again, into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. You, unless it's an emergency, and God does understand. He's not up there saying, you ain't follow protocol. You know, I ain't going to ask your prayer. Shut up. You know, that's, <laughs> that's not what God is interested in. No, no, no. But in normal prayer environments, in normal prayer times, you should exercise protocol. Of course, he hears our prayer in emergencies. Sometimes we can only say that one word prayer, that one name prayer. Jesus, every time you are in trouble, you may not be able to follow it up with anything else. But under normal conditions, there's a protocol. And the Lord knows that. Again, Psalm 104. Verse 4, Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. The verse goes on to say in verse 5, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures throughout all generations. That is the protocol. You do not come to God begging, pleading under normal conditions without entering his gates with thanksgiving and entering his courts with praise. Let's look at this text, shall we? Psalm 100, verse 6. Actually, Psalm 150. Let's go there. Verse 6. Psalm 150. Again, my God, beloved, this is about praise. This is the praise practice of disciples. Lesson number 7. Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything, <laughs> breathing, and we read this from the New International Version, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The King James Version says, praise ye the Lord. You praise him. One of the things, if I can elaborate on this as a disciple, I owe God everything. I am because of what he called me to be. I have because of what he's given me. And I am here right now because he put me here. All right? So when I'm in a praise environment in a corporate setting, when I am blessing the Lord in church, I'm not interested in filming nobody. I'm not interested in... Uh, every chord. Yes, I am a musician. I know chords. I know uh, what sounds good. I know what's off. I know what's flat. Again, this is not a swipe. But if you're not gifted in music, if you're not talented in singing and it's a raw material gift and you're not gifted, don't be offended if you're not asked to serve on the praise team, lead songs, be on the choir, okay? Because the praise, hear me closely, is supposed to be unto God. Because you have a personal desire, but not the gift, is not legitimate to be a distraction. It is not a legitimate desire just because you want to do it, but you're not talented and gifted. Here's the big word, call to doing it. It's not enough to be a distraction. God said, 
in his word to make his praise glorious. So I'm going to ask you a question. Again, I got to deal with this because people get offended when you're not a gifted singer, when you're not a gifted worship leader, and they don't ask you to do these things. But I love the Lord. Nobody questioned that. But in the Old Testament, they had what they had as the Korahites. Asaph developed a gift of worshipers and others that the Bible talks about that um, were gifted. Their gift wasn't a distraction. Their gift enhanced the worship moment. Their gift enhanced the praise moment. Beloved, I am not the world's greatest singer. I am a songwriter. I've written over 100 songs in my life. Some of them you have heard, some of them you haven't heard. Uh, my brothers and I co-wrote and wrote together a um, uh, CD back in 1996 from the group The Refreshing. So many people talk to me about some of those songs that my brothers wrote, Tim and David, and uh, I wrote. Um, you know, that are still blessing lives today. And I'm still writing songs. Believe me, there are songs you have not heard that will soon be heard. But, you know, that's a gift God gave me, a talent God gave me, an ability God gave me, and he gave it to me as a raw material to perfect it. Some of you don't know I play the saxophone. Stick with me. One day you're going to hear me play Again, I'm rusty, I'm shaking off the rust because I'm not going to present that gift half shot. I'm not going to bring God anything just because I say I love him. Because I love him, I want to make his praise glorious. Am I saying that God don't accept your praise? No, but I'm talking about in a corporate setting. No person's praise should be a distraction. Okay, so I'm not going to just get up and try to do riffs and runs and no anointing. I got talent, but is the anointing? Believe me, <laughs> beloved, I've grown up in church. I wasn't always saved, but I've been around long enough as a musician, as a worshiper, as a praiser, as a choir director, as a tenor, as a saxophone player. I've pretty much been in church doing church. And beloved, it's not a competition. I remember the days back in the day, we had what we called joy nights, joy nights. And uh, it would almost be tantamount to a choir competition. And because flesh was involved, if you weren't the it choir or from a it church, um, then there would be time you would go into this environment, folk would sit on you and uh, God wasn't getting glory out of none of that stuff, you know, because we were taking it as entertainment. It had no kingdom intrinsic value at all, competition. And I remember once we went to a joy night and um, man, we weren't participating. You know, I grew up in First United Church, 3400 Copley Road. And many of you that go back in the day know we could sing back then. And um, yet I thank God for the leaders of the choir. I was one of the directors and assistant, but I remember the leaders focused on worship and praise. They were not getting up there saying, let's out sing anybody. So many joy nights and stuff like that, we didn't go to because it wasn't about that. Bishop Sardis developed us well to not do that stuff. But my point was there were uh, many choirs there. And there was one particular choir that had on black and white. The women had on white blouses and the black skirts and um, the brothers had on white shirts, black ties and black pants. And, and um, some of those people that got up there weren't what you would call the elite class. They didn't have expensive robes and all that. But when they got up the scene, they were anointed. They sang the roof off the church. They sang till you couldn't sit on them because any ounce of Holy Ghost you had was moved by the anointing on their talent, their gift, and their ability. Beloved, it is still the anointing that makes the difference. 
Talent alone is good. But the anointing makes the difference. And we don't want lack of talent to be a distraction from the anointing. So I have no problem because I don't lead songs anymore. I don't lead worship as much as I used to. Because, you know, there are other people that are more talented and skilled. And the anointing is there. But every now and then, the anointing comes on me. I see something. And it's evident the anointing is there. Not just Bishop scratching his back-in-the-day itch. And I, I understand there's an anointing that destroys the yokes, removes the burdens. And uh, if I'm not talented in an area, then I'm not going to get up there and try to perform in that area, no matter how much I want to. It's just like, like I told you, my oldest son designed the cover of my wife's book. Okay, the 490 fact. I can't do this. I am not anointed to do this. If I did this, I don't know what it would look like. <laughs> but it would be a distraction, and there would probably be many people that would look at it. And uh, I ain't buying that junk, you know, and that would not be a place of ministry for them. Now, I am a writer also. I believe that God uses me to write, and I believe I'm gifted as a writer. As the Lord comes on me, I don't just write to write. I write when I have something to communicate. I've authored eight books already. Some fiction books telling stories but lead to the cross. Some uh, teaching uh, books. Some uh, religious, quote unquote, uh, theology books. You know, I have stuff on Amazon too, but that's not why I'm here to tell you buy my book. I want you to buy my wife's book. Yes, I do, because it's great and it's ministry. And it's worth it. Go on Amazon and get it today, the 490 factor by the Althea Carrington. But beloved, what I'm trying to do is when I say, let everything that have breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. That's the catch all in the protocol for all of us. And I don't want us wasting time being offended. If you're not a gifted singer, don't seek the mic. If you're not anointed even as a gifted singer, ask God to anoint you. So your flesh won't be a distraction. That's all. Let's move on. Let's move on. Because praise is an intentional and sincere commentary and demonstration of singing. Listen, here's the list. So if you're not a singer, maybe you're a dancer. Okay? Crying out to God. <laughs> and crying out about his words. Because he's been good to you. And for all he's done. See, that's what praise is. Praise is an intentional commentary. An intentional exercise of dancing. Singing about how you feel towards God regarding what he's done for you. Different from worship. Praise focuses on the deeds and the acts of God towards you, while worship focuses on the personage of God and who he is to you, okay? So when you say things like he's a burden bearer, a heart lifter, a heavy load bearer, okay? This is not just saying of what he's done. This is who he is to you. So it is both a praise and a worship. But there are some intimate things that when you are worshiping God, you say, like, you're awesome, you're mighty. Me personally, I don't use the word often, uh, awesome. I try not to use it for anything else other than when I'm talking about God. So I reserve the word awesome when I'm worshiping. That's me. I'm not telling you to do it. It's not a religious thing. It's just that when I'm discussing how I feel about God, I use the word awesome. But when I praise my God, Lord, you are the one that brought me out. You're the one that kept me. You're the one that delivered me from the hand of the enemy. You're the one that broke the bondage of poverty, debt, lack, insufficiency, mediocrity from my life. Lord, you healed me when I was sick. You bore me up when I was falling. Oh, man, I'm feeling brother God. Hey, already, because I praise him. Can I tell you, as I got to get out of here, disciples are praisers in the truest sense. Because disciples 
See, praise as a part of their discipleship and discipline. Hear me. Disciples see praise as a part of their discipline. In the process of becoming and being like Jesus and reflecting him in the earth. If you truly going to praise him, you will truly reflect him. You cannot praise him without reflecting him. You cannot praise him without reflecting him. And I declare disciples are praisers. They understand the protocol. Again, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. <laughs> and in Psalm 150, David the writers of all the other Psalms culminate by saying, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let me ask you a question. When the last time you just praised, I, I was outside a couple of weeks ago and the Lord was just good to me. He reminded me how good he was. And uh, I, was, I was taking out the trash. Let me just tell you what I was doing. I was taking out the garbage. <laughs> and I just felt the praise come on me. I didn't care who knew it. And I just yelled out in my front, hallelujah. And I did it again. I did it again. I did it again. Beloved, I almost broke out into a step, but I wasn't trying to distract anybody driving by. But I tell you, a praise hit me and I began to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Carrying the trash down, walking back up. I live on a hill. I'm walking up the hill, <laughs> praising God, shouting unto God. And I don't care if neighbors heard me or not. They probably said, this guy crazy. Uh, some of them know I'm a man of God, but, you know, I guess he there you go. Beloved, because praise, glory, oh, glory. Praise is a part of the protocol of a disciple. Whew. Disciples are seeking to intimately know the master, the Lord. And it's, in, it's virtually impossible, I would dare say impossible, to be like a person that you don't know. You don't know him, you can't be like him. You don't know him, you surely can't reflect him. To know him is not just to love him. To know him is to re represent him, is to reflect him. Can I say praises reflect him? Just like worshipers. Hmm. Love y'all gotta excuse me. I feel the Holy Ghost. I tell you, I feel it. I feel it. Disciples are those who seek to be like Jesus. Discipline as a praiser is a key component of being a disciple. So again, I intentionally open my mouth and bless him. I intentionally give him great glory. I intentionally, with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise. With a heart of thanksgiving, I intentionally bless the Lord. Woo! Praise is a discipline, just like worship. It's not a feeling. It's a discipline. I will always bless him. I will always lift him up. Glory. I will always give him glory. Honor and praise for the great things he has done. Who, my God in heaven, Lord have mercy. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Both praise and worship are to God above and beyond all others. And disciples indulge early and often. In one of these Psalms, I believe it's Psalm 119, or actually maybe Psalm, no, it's definitely Psalm 119. Seven times a day, I will praise the Lord. Seven times a day. That means intentionally, the writer said, I'm going to set aside time. I'm going to mark that time as vital, and I will praise him intentionally. You know, before I close, I, I remember David, King David, 
when he brought the ark back, you know, Saul, one of his faults was he did not seek the presence of God. Saul was religious. Saul met the part and God allowed Saul, a Benjamite, to be the king. But Saul did not worship like he should have. Saul was chosen by Samuel to do the work of the king. Samuel even said to Saul, if you had just did what God told you to do, and I'm paraphrasing, God would have established your kingdom. But now because of your disobedience, he has taken it from you and given it to somebody else, your, your neighbor, somebody more worthy. Beloved, I'm making a statement. I don't make apologies for it. I just want you to buckle up in here. When you are not a praiser, you forfeit much by way of God's favor towards you. God doesn't bless us just to bless us. Can I dare say he made us. The Psalm says we are his sheep, the people of God. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Before it says enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his course of praise, it reminds us he made us, not we ourselves. Can I dare say if you do not praise God, I ain't talking about to get on the camera. I'm not talking about to get in somebody's praise break. I'm not talking about to be noticed and talked about. Because whether you like it or not, I'm about to say this and I must. Your praise is not for an audience of many. It's for an audience of one. We may lead many to praise, but it's also always unto one. Now, I, in my early days as a worship leader from time to time, I would get lost in praise. I would because I love them so much. And honestly, I would forget I'm in front of all these people and uh, setting them up to come into the presence of God. Being a musician, being a praiser, you know, music cuts the trough so that the water of the word can flow freely. As a praiser, okay, I come to God because I've been called to praise him. I involve music because he made music. Satan was Lucifer. He's no longer the anointed cherub that covered. He lost his job. He stood behind the throne of God, ushering the praise and the worship to God. But then he felt like, well, since I'm the one directing, I can get in front of God. And because of me, he's the reason why they praise him. And the Lord gave him the left foot of fellowship. Michael and his archangels fought against Lucifer and the fallen, booted them out of heaven. And uh, <laughs> his time is about up. Beloved, you got to understand, you as a disciple should be an intentional praiser. Just like you as a disciple should be an intentional worshiper. Nobody should have to beg you to worship. Nobody should have to beg you to praise. Has God been good to you? Has God opened doors for you? Has God made ways for you? Has God declared he will bless you? He will strengthen you? Listen, I know many of us have things to cry about. I know many of us have things we're waiting on God to do, but will you praise him? Will you worship him? I didn't coin this statement, but I use it often. If you're waiting on God to open the door, why not praise him while you're in the hallway? Not the cliche, but to really speak wisdom. I need God to do something. I will praise him while I wait. I know it's not easy, but you learn as a disciple Praise is a discipline. Praise is a discipline. Now, how does our individual praise, I'm about to close, work to disciple others? How does our individual praise work to disciple others? Because praise is contagious. And praise brings results. Man, I'm running out of time, but I, I got to cause you to look at the word of God and see praises were blessed folk. I remember in 2 Chronicles 20, when the people of God went up against the children of Ammon, Mount Seir, 
you know, Moab, you know, and the Bible said, put the praises out there. In some other text, the Bible said, send Judah first. I was reading in Judges, in my morning reading this morning, how they put Judah first before them when they were fighting enemies. And, and praise, the word Judah means praise. And how it's so vital that we be praisers, okay? Praisers are blessed with victories. Praisers are blessed with great movement in burdens and areas of concern being remedied. Praisers have advantage of the Holy Ghost dealing in your situation. Praisers have the intervention of God when you've run out of strength to fight, when you run out of the ability to defend yourself with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise with a heart of thanksgiving. I'll bless you, Lord. When others see you do that, that disciplines them to do the same because they not only see you doing it, they see the results. Last point. What are some benefits of individual praise and corporate praise? Individual praise is a discipline and it allows me to enter into his presence, his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. I dare say that I cannot contribute to a corporate move of God's praise until I have learned the individual art of God's praise. So individually, I become a practicing praiser so that corporately, I can be a participating practicing praiser. Woo! Teach man of God. I become an individual praiser because it's practice for being a, a participant in corporate praise. Because when I'm individually praising him, I'm alone. I'm not worrying about who's watching me. And when I'm a corporate praiser, I don't care <laughs> who's watching me. If a room is full, there's only praise going on between me and God that he is concerned about. Yes, he blesses the corporate setting, but oh, how sweet it is when I'm a practicing praiser, how God blesses me. Beloved, I gotta close. I'm grateful for this time. Again, we had to come on a little early, some meetings I have to attend today, and I'm just thanking God because you tuned in with me, and you will see this replay whether on Facebook or on YouTube. I want to I want to encourage you become a praiser. I want to encourage you become a praiser. Can I tell you when you praise more you complain less. Can I tell you when you praise more you see the move of God in your life more. Can I tell you when you praise more the enemy can't get to you with stupid stuff. Can I tell you, when you praise more, you have more peace than you've ever been. When you praise as a disciple, your joy is full because joy is not an emotion. It's a knowledge that in Christ, because of Christ, with Christ, I'm always victorious. But when you have joy, you are a praiser. Ah, can I declare that again? When you have joy, you are a praiser. Praise is what I do. Thank you, Bishop Murphy. Because I want to be close to you. Lord, I lift my hands in praise. Praise is who I am. I will praise him while I, I, while I can. I bless him at all times. I long to praise you through the good and the bad. I long to praise you through the happy and the sad. I long to praise you in spite of all I may have gone through because praise is what I do. It's a discipline of a disciple. Will you praise him? Will you bless him? Will you give him glory? Because he's good to you. Because you laud his power. You declare his mighty acts. You will praise him. Father, thank you. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Lord, bless your name for your wondrous acts for allowing me to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, that with joy I draw water from the well of salvation. Lord, because of you I live and move and have my being. By you I have life and that more abundantly. I'm a praiser because you're good to me. Hallelujah. What I have, you gave me. Who I am, you made me. What I do, you for God, the awesome God, the mighty God, the everlasting God, the true and living God. I praise you. I praise you. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus, I praise you. My God, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Man, if I don't get out of here now, we, oh, oh Lord, thank you. One more thing I want to tell you. Can I tell you all this real quick? Praise turns the tide of the battle. I felt prompted by the Holy Ghost to say that somebody watching me is going through a battle. And I know, you know, there are prophets and people that say they're prophets that get a room of 100 people. In that room of 100 people, one person may have a headache. Some woman may be having female issues. Somebody may have a crick in their back. I'm not that kind of prophet. I speak with the say of the Lord. When he told me to say it, I said, somebody's in a battle right now. And God said, your praise will turn the tide of the battle. The praise that you give will turn the tide of the battle. The praise that you give right now will turn the tide of the battle. Can I testify with my few moments left? I know my time is leaving, but beloved, there was a time my wife and I had to move. We didn't have knowledge of where we were going to go. We had put in for a house and applied for a mortgage. And the Lord knows there was delay after delay after delay. And uh, I was laying on my bed angry because I was just exhausted. I wasn't sleeping at night. This was years ago. Somebody say long time ago. I, I just was exhausted. I wasn't sleeping. I was angry. I was upset, emotionally worn. And I remember laying there and the Lord said, get up and praise me. Get up and praise me. God have mercy. Hey, Lord, get up and praise me. I got up and began to just jump up and down and shout hallelujah. And praise God. I was in my bedroom. My wife came running upstairs wondering what was going on. Oh, my God. And she began to praise God. Can I tell you that not 10 hours after, what even 10 hours after, we got a call. Mr. Carrington, I'm sorry for the delay. We had to go through some things to get this done, but your mortgage is approved. We're going to settlement on this date. You have less of a payment than you thought. Interest rate is a lot less than you thought. And um, congratulations. <laughs> wow! I praise God, not just because I needed a mortgage. God said, I will not have my disciple not praise me. I will not have my son hold back your praise. Somebody here right now needs to give God praise. He's turning the tide of your battle. Father, I've done what you told me. I've obeyed your voice. The Lord, show yourself strong. Father, be glorified this day. Let some unbeliever begin to say, I'm going to try this. And let in the midst of their praise, Lord God, find that you're the savior of their soul. Lord, I speak to them now that they must, Lord God, admit that they need you in their praise. Then they must believe you beyond a shadow of a doubt. And then they must commit to follow you. Lord, in the process, let them begin to praise you. Lord God, many will fill with the Holy Ghost this way, just praising you, not tearing, so, so to speak, not saying Jesus fast, so to speak, not saying hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah fast, but Lord, just a sincere praise for letting them live, a sincere praise, for not letting them die last night when they drove home drunk, not letting them, Lord God, get that Mickey from that drug somebody slipped in the punch, and for some reason they dropped the glass and said, forget it, I don't want it. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord. Let some unbeliever come to you today. Let some believer dealing with a crisis come to you today. And with their hands lifted up and their mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, let them preach. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Glory. Beloved, I got to go. I got to go. But you can reach us by email. That is LBC Ministry at Yahoo.com. I said LBC Ministry at Yahoo.com. Our phone number is 443-776-0255. That's 443-776-0255. And our email actually will always be available. Our phone number will always be available. And our website is always available. That is lbcbaltimore.org. You soon want to see our new website, but until it's up, beloved, use our web address, lbcbaltimore.org. Beloved, use those to contact us. I would love to hear that you gave your heart to Jesus today in your praise. I would love to hear how the Lord blessed you and came in your situation and God did what he said he would do um, because he's faithful. Um, I just can't thank him enough. I just can't thank him enough because he's so good. I'm kind of switching up a little bit because I just feel this in my spirit. And um, there is an instrumental of praise is what I do. And I, I just want to play this. I, I, I don't, I know Bishop Murphy, he's my covenant brother, but um, I don't have the right to play his music without permission. I'm not trying to steal from him. So there is a public domain. Um, it's not as good as his, but I just felt that song in my spirit. I'm going to close this broadcast on this song because beloved, I just feel the Lord. I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord in the midst. So, beloved, let this play and you help me. You praise God with me. Come on. My God, you praise God with me. I give credit to the one who did this. My friend, I'll call your name later. But you know, Aaron, I love you. Amen. I love you. So, I just thank God. God bless you. God bless you. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Wow, Jesus! Hallelujah!
Yeah.